and welcome to Theory Craft. I'm Ben. Over there is my co-host Jack with his very little friends, Boris Johnson and Kylie Minogue. They are our mascots for this very random series we do, which is Rant, Raven, Ramble, all things sci-fi from television to movies gone by. We are two dudes that like to rant, rave, and ramble all these things, as well as just nerd out on anything else in between. For this week, we are ranting about the various problems that is Power Rangers. It's been a series that's almost, what, 30 years old, give or take, and without a doubt has so many plot holes, it may as well be Swiss cheese. But... Yeah, this is it for today. We are ranting Power Rangers. So without further ado, so to begin with, Power Rangers as a whole is a very random series in terms that it's a group of teenagers between the numbers of three and six, maybe seven at a push, who randomly gain powers from random reasons. Sometimes it's a cosmic being, sometimes it's just pure sci-fi logic. Yeah. And they basically fight baddies who are destroying the Earth. They gain incredible powers by transforming into these very strange costumes that give them wa- random weapons and basically allow them to do all these bizarre things even though it's basically a leotard and a bicycle helmet <laughs> pretty much it's or like a, morph a suit, i should say it's a morph suit but it's a lycra suit with a crash helmet from some sort of bizarre 90s club i think yeah boris has been training to become a power ranger you wouldn't be able to fight your way out of a wet paper bag let alone fight monsters Boris was trained by the KGB and is more than capable of becoming a Power Ranger if they made the suit smaller. That's nothing, mate, Tra. Living in Australia where 90% of the wildlife is trying to kill you every day. <laughs> <laughs> I think... He's already had a drink today. Yeah, I think Boris has had a bit too much. Him and Minogi have their... Interesting taste of beverage, shall, shall we shall we say. But the thing is with Power Rangers is, given the fact that they are given abilities to fight these monstrous things one way or another, you would assume it would make sense to a degree to have adults, even if they were in their, say, early 20s. At least they've had enough years to be... Skilled enough to like fight off people that have whatever means to destroy the world. You would think that they could be armed forces or they could be someone that has had some training. But the logic with this series is that it's teenagers who have a slight grasp on kung fu, karate, or whatever martial arts that they choose from. And yet, as soon as as soon as the Power Ranger suits go on, suddenly. They are experts in all forms of martial arts because apparently the suit can give you all the abilities of different fighting styles. Apparently, yes, yes, that's very true. Like there are some teams where they have pre-existing knowledge, say Power Ranger Samurai, for example, where they are all samurai rangers. That's fair. It's all that about makes sense. them. That can be excused. Yeah. But then it's like the original Power Rangers team where you get the majority of them are learning karate. Ironically, the Red Ranger is the leader of this Jodo. But there we go. But the thing that I think is the most bizarre of all, why does none of the Power Rangers have parents? Not a single one of them. Cross that first question off my list then. (laughs) Yeah, well, this is we uh, we otherwise the only glancing mention we have is we will take Cole from uh, Power Rangers Wild Force, for example. Then you may get a backstory that maybe his parents died, and like that is like a whole part of the storyline for him and like throughout the whole series. But apart from like a passing mention, sometimes where's all the other adults? If we're meant to believe that these adults playing teenagers are just them, where's the parents? Where are they? I don't know. Like the thing is, as well is. Even though they are technically teenagers, how 
what the hell is it that they're all so well trimmed and so muscular? Even though they spent what be the ages between fifteen to eighteen, give or take, uh, something like that. I can only assume because I'm like in the in the original series, weren't most of them in college at the time? I think it was like the last year of high school, early college years. So it's like eighteen to twenty, give or take. So the again, it's a very odd age range to pick from. But the thing that always sticks in my mind is the original intro to this series was that Zordon was looking for teenagers with attitude. And it was just like, right, somehow having attitude gives you the ability to be a Power Ranger. If that's the case, why wasn't Vicky Pollard a Power Ranger? Well, the thing is with Power Rangers, because it's mostly directed to much uh, towards a much younger audience, which is when... You know, when like when you were kids and like when we were kids, we never even noticed any of these things. But it's only when you're an adult, you go, this don't make sense, you know. And then hence why this channel exists for us to pick on it. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, the thing is, obviously, they are aimed at kids. A lot of the series so, is like, just... A lot of like the details now can just fly straight over their heads. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is... I've said to you, the whole premise behind the series is that it's not meant to be there for plot logic, it's there for merchandise. That is literally the whole premise behind every single series, is to make money off of kids because they want the toys or the weaponry or whatever. Because in recent years, I swear, each iteration of the team seems to have more and more weaponry that they seem to customise over around the team compared to Mighty Morphin, where they had the same sort of gear, they had the same sort of weaponry, the only difference was of the colour scheme. That was it. Well, I find like you saying that, just like, obviously, I remember some of the toys that I had when I was a kid. I had some of the... I had, like, the Time Force Megazord. I uh, had the Wild Force Megazord, although there's, like, three different versions of it uh, with, like, different animals and so on, but... It's just funny that how like we always wanted them as kids, but now as adults, they're being put on eBay, and they originally were only worth like maybe what a tenner, maybe. But now they're selling for ridiculous prices now. Well, this is it. I mean, I think with all things from our childhood, it the interest rate is based on nostalgia, and it's definitely Power Rangers. Pokemon, and I'd say to a degree Digimon, not so much Yu-Gi-Oh! because that's still going, but it's the fact that it's the nostalgia element of... I suppose we were quite lucky as kids to have such a range of fiction. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of stuff that kids have today for television is either, like we say, Power Rangers that's still going, or stuff that's just rehashes of previous ideas. Like, there is very limited original concepts for fiction. But the thing that I always get a bit confused about is with the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger movie, is that they get an upgrade in terms of their suits where it looks more battle hardened like it's actual armor and they don't explain where that comes from and then by the end of the movie it goes back to what it's normally known as which is the morph suits with the biker helmet sort of concept yeah which like it i remember watching i'm not sure if i linked it to you a while back but there is a documentary that's out there now and oddly for some reason the actors don't appear to have aged a day which is weird but um <laughs> What, it was like a whole documentary about the behind-the-scenes thing. It's about 44 minutes long, and I encourage everybody to watch it on the movie. It's actually brilliant, the way they go into it, and they were explaining about the suit and everything. But it was basically just because of the movie, and like they knew maybe some more adults were going to go watch it, and adults were going to take their kids to watch it. That has to appeal to them as well. But the main reason for that, why they wanted those more bulkier, like more protective suits is mostly just because they wanted to look better for the film. And that was literally the only explanation I found. <laughs> but this is what I love, is the fact that that's such a loose logic. But that's the thing with Power Rangers, is that everything is so loose in terms of logic that you just don't even question it anymore. Well, like... another thing which is very loose in terms of logic as well, throughout the whole thing, we see... In every single series that or series whatever that we've ever had of Power Rangers, it's always fighting like some sort of like co baddies, like going from like the 
Like going from just like you have a new baddie pretty much in every single like episode, get here or there, or maybe you have like constant characters which are still going, or you have like a main plot which they're working towards, which is going to be at the end of where the season they finish on. But the problem is, they never go immediately to the source of the big bad or the big evil. No, I mean the thing I find most bizarre is obviously linked to the whole idea of making money for merchandise, they have the variant Zords, so the Zords get power-ups every so often to beat the tougher bad guys. Yeah. But it's by weird logic that they have to unlock the Zords, which, again, isn't very well explained, other than the fact that they... I Sometimes it's down to just basically being more in tune with it, which I kind of get. But there are some times where they just literally unlock this new Zord because they're Power Rangers. And then they end up adding to their power. By that logic, why don't they just learn how to unlock all the Zords on day one, go to where the main bad guy is and kick their ass and then it's all over with? Yeah, you'd think. (laughs) It's just like... (laughs) I think there's one series, I think it's RPM, where it's literally just one Zord, but it adds to it over time because reasons. To the point where it's this massive mech Zord that's got like 15 different Zords added onto it, give or take. And it takes them the entire series just to mech it all up to beat the bad guy. But the thing is, RPM is probably the weirdest one of all of them due to the fact that the bad guy is actually a creation of the person that's been making the Power Ranger stuff. Yeah. So RPM is basically... It's kind of like Power Rangers meets Mad Max in terms of like the world has been decimated but one sort of space bubble of a city... And it's all because of the bad guy known as Venjax, which is a computer, which is a very loose interpretation of how from how uh, 5,000 or 9,000, whatever it is, that Space Odyssey movie. But basically, Venjax basically prints out baddies every episode and then basically builds his own body eventually by the end of it. And Why didn't you do that in the beginning? I don't know. I think it was just down to the fact that he didn't have enough scrap material or something. I don't know what. But he eventually makes his own body and it's revealed that the main scientist who hides herself throughout partway through the series basically says that it's her own fault for Venjax because she was commissioned by the government to create the Power Ranger suits but was locked away by the government for safety. But she didn't like being locked away. So she created a computer virus to try and unlock the uh, armed forces like space bunker or wherever, wherever the fudge she was to basically give herself some freedom for one Saturday because she wanted to go outside and screwed up and basically yeah. decimated the world. Yeah. So that's a hell of a like control alt delete moment, I would imagine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. But there's. You know, but there's like so many things in Power Rangers you just have to accept. As an adult watching it, you have to accept it's going to be loose as heck. It's mostly aimed at kids. Like, kids aren't going to notice. But going back to the Zords, it kind of triggered a question which I don't actually have on this list. But it's just been reignited now. I was thinking about it. And like when the Zords, obviously, when they go to fight the big bad, whatever it is, because they grow giant or they build themselves as a giant, whatever, and the Zord comes together... Something which never ever makes sense. Most of the time, they either it's either the opposite way around. Either they may be fighting in the city, for example, at first, but then as soon as the Megazord comes on, they're in a forest in the middle of nowhere for some reason, or it's the opposite way around. That's something yeah. I've noticed. Yeah, I've never really understood understood that logic either. To be fair, because with the original Power Ranger series, it was always randomly in the forest, despite the fact that they started the fight in the street. And then you get like older series, say like Wild Force or Samurai, where they're in the forest, but they have all the battle scenes in a big city, despite being nowhere near a city. <laughs> no, no, but. The thing is, obviously, Power Rangers is a very loose adaptation of the Japanese series Super Sentai, which is where 
a lot of the scenes where like it's the Zord fights and the suit fights are done. And the funny thing is, I heard, I don't know how true it is, but the stage in which they do the fights where with the Zords is the same stage where they did the original Godzilla scenes, like from Godzilla. So they say, yeah. So you could argue to a degree that there could be a crossover with Godzilla versus Power Rangers. I think that's go I think that's just going down too far into a rabbit hole that doesn't exist. Yes, but this is theory craft. We like to dig down those rabbit holes. But another thing that I completely forgot while looking at the list that I have is that Alpha 5, even though I hate that sodding robot so much, <laughs> he is able, I don't know if he or she or it, I think is probably the better term. Oh, d- it, don't stop. <laughs> they are able to, not always, but sometimes able to fight off the putties, okay? The so if man, yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, Zordon creates Alpha 5. I don't know why. Like, he just randomly creates Alpha 5 as a way to man the station that is the Power Ranger hub to keep an eye on the morphing grid and basically recruit Power Rangers. But if that's capable, why not just create more versions of Alpha 5 through the morphing grid that's able to tap into it that's probably more sustainable? And probably you'd be able to deal with the problem better. And that question, what is the morphing grid, which you've been racking your brain about ever since? Oh, God, the morphing grid is the one thing I can never get my head around because it is the most ambiguous power source throughout the entire series. Everybody's able to tap into it. They've had times where people have had other versions tap into it because of crossovers the worst one of all is where it's Super Mega Force, where they're able to tap into every single Power Ranger that's existed up until that point, which includes Time Force, but they very rarely used it because Time Force is meant to be set from the future but, but goes they, into the past. How can they use Time Force if Time Force is in the future? Uh, but, uh, but. Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. But basically, Time Force is set in the far flung future, which comes back. Back to what was the present day when it came about. Time Force, I hate the logic of anyway, because it just made no sense. Well, as we discussed on this channel many times, anything to do with time travel is just a poor lake. <laughs> yeah. But don't get me wrong, I love time travel stuff, but there are times where I just think, why? Like, and the logic is just so skewed. <laughs> but... The morphing grid is basically them to basically say, we can tap into this energy source and transform into these various things. Okay, but why haven't you let anyone else do it? Like, why isn't the military trained in using it? I think the only time that's technically a military type Power Rangers is Power Rangers SPD, because it's a police force. Actually, yeah, so there'd be like a government light sect kind of power. Yeah, ranges. because RPM to a degree, yes, was again a government function, but that was just due to a colossal fudge up. Like, at least with RPM, they were trying to fix it wrong. But with SPD, the whole thing was that there was one team that went missing, so they had to recruit a new team to replace them. And that was it. That, that was the whole premise behind SPD. Yeah. But going to SPD, there's one thing that I could never figure out. So the guy that's basically the leader behind SPD is an alien which, which looks like a big blue dog, basically. When yeah. he transforms into his Power Ranger suit, Yes, this is exactly the thing I wanted to try and rack your brains over. How does he Where the hell did he... Sh- yeah, like... And why does he have a human form? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, there's also there's that cat woman alien as well that randomly transforms into a cat ranger yeah. for two episodes. I think so. But again, at least she's slightly human to a degree, but it's the dog guy that always... I could never rack my heads around because it's like, 
That, where where does your schnoz go? Where does your schnoz go? Schnoz. Um, Considering you've got to like, fit like that into a friggin' helmet. Yeah, which... <laughs> unless they have, like, Time Lord technology to basically... Yeah, it doesn't work. I, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, what have we got on your list? What do you want to add to this? Oh, well, we've already gone through a load of things, so we're making good time, actually. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. Let me see. What was it? Oh, no, we've done the find this suit. Ah, yes, there's something here. Yeah. There's something which I've never really quite understood, apart from the, apart from the odd cameo that we see. Like, some of you guys may remember the... It was in Wild Force, and it's a Red Ranger episode where they at the time when it was filmed i think in like 2002 i think they only had 10 red rangers at that yes. time for the other series so you had a where you had 10 red rangers go to the moon but then we have like the odd cameo here and there but why does it seem like most of the time a, the, one group of power rangers or whoever it is doesn't seem to have a clue about past power rangers at all or know of any other ones that exist in the same universe yeah i <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the only time that they acknowledge the previous teams fully is with Power Rangers Super Mega Force, where they're given the ability to change through all the different ranges throughout the years. But again, it's like they don't explain and they don't under they don't say how they know how to use their abilities. They just basically give them random things from that team to use against the enemy. But if yeah. that's the case, why don't they just go find the rangers that are trained in using that certain power to just fight against the enemy? Exactly. Wouldn't that make a lot more sense? Because <laughs> the thing is, with Super Mega Force, they did do at the final battle, every single ranger turns up and fights the main bad guy, and the day is won. But there is one slight issue with that in terms of one ranger at least, which is Tommy Oliver. Who has been at least what six different rangers? Yeah, and then you got the well, he was. I think he was in Samurai for like a few episodes, but he was the Red Ranger in Wild Force. He's currently in prison right now. So at the time when that was filmed, he was in prison. <laughs> it was. I think in Samurai, it was the Red Ranger from RPM turned up. But the funny thing is with that, right, is the entire episode he doesn't take off his suit. They no. basically give it a BS answer, which is basically in case of cosmic radiation from where he's from, he doesn't want to breathe in the air in case it kills him. But the reason why is because the guy that was the Red Ranger for that didn't want to come back. He only wanted to come back if he could do a dub over. So they basically hired someone else and then he dubbed it over, which basically is such a stupid thing, though. Like... Yes, Power Rangers is a very cheesy series, but it's one hell of a series to try and start your career off if you want to be an actor. Yeah. Like, not to be funny, but even if it is pure cringe, I would happily start a career on Power Rangers because it's something you're going to be known for forever. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like we say with the Red Ranger from... Um, Wild Force. Wild Force was definitely an iffy one afterwards because of... Dodgy dealings. Were the Wild Force Rangers in that episode? No, I don't think Wild Force because did do. Because I, I have watched only bits of it. I don't think there was every single group of Power Rangers in that episode. I don't think. No, because so I mean, a few which were missing. Yeah, I mean the thing is, with a lot of the scenes, they are some of them are filmed by the American team, but some of it's edited to use the footage from the. Japanese series, which, excuse me, which is why a lot of the time the footage looks a lot older because technically the Japanese series is older anyway. So the Super Sentai series is 10 years older anyway. It's been running since the 80s, give or take. And when we get to Mighty Morphing, that's their 10 year mark. But for us, that's where it all began. And it's just a lot of like cut and hope to stick together in terms of logic when they do the scenes. Yeah. But there are some ranges which I still don't get my head around. The worst one of all is 
Power Rangers, Operation Overdrive, and the Red Ranger. Yeah. Uh, that one was just pure creepy because he was an android that this archaeologist basically made because he wanted a son but was too busy being Indiana Jones of sorts and basically created an android who somehow became the Red Ranger. Yeah, because what, didn't he originally start off as like a head on top of like a metal... Uh, well, it was like a metal... like It was just a head, basically. <laughs> well... Place. There is one episode where they, they basically reveal the fact that he is an android because he basically gets shorted out by the bad guy and then he gets his head plopped onto the table and going, ar, 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 like yeah. Crichton from Red Dwarf. But <laughs> it's just so bizarre that <sighs> Operation Overdrive was a, the probably one of the weirder ones of the whole lot. Because it was trying to add in elements of mysticism with the whole like dual thing where they basically tapped into the mystical energies of the it was something knight. I can't remember what the weird like gold guy was, but he was a knight of some kind that that basically told the rich guy to make the Power Ranger team, and that was that. But he weirdly had a butler. It was like a mixture of Indiana Jones meets Bruce Wayne meets, like, Power Rangers. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> I mean, I just, I didn't like Oper uh, Operation Overdrive all that much because, one, the Zords were these massive cars, and I could never fathom where the hell did he store them all. Like, yeah, good point, good point. <laughs> Like, at least with the other ones, all the Zords, they manifested through the grid because it was the morphing grid, that was it. But somehow he had this massive mansion that could hide all these Zords, which were like five times bigger, if not ten times bigger versions of normal cars or vehicles. But surely shouldn't they have a mansion to themselves? <laughs> but this is it. Like, if anything, the underground system kind of reminded me of Thunderbirds. And I wonder if that's what the inspiration was for that series. Oh, very well could have been. <laughs> because again, it's like it's a lot of just basic ideas of vehicles, but they were just these monolithic versions of them. Yeah. But uh what else have we got? Oh god, here we go. Ninja Steel. Like I tried to watch that series, but ugh. I'm not a favorite, not a favorite. <laughs> okay, so the thing is with Ninja Steel, it had a really interesting premise in terms of the fact that there was this kid that got abducted by aliens and basically got enslaved by the aliens who had a fascination over this thing called the Enjex or something or whatever, which basically allowed them to tap into Ninja Steel, which allowed them to forge weaponry and make them look like samurais or ninja, sorry. But at the same point, it was like the Morphers, a lot of the Morphers had been handheld ones, which were quite tiny little things, which makes sense because you had to carry them around. I'm trying to wrap my head around how the hell did they even explain carrying this? If I can get the there we go. Like, this is a monolithic thing. But I try to figure out how the hell do you hide this on your person from day to day without being caught by somebody going, Are you a Power Ranger? The only thing is, like, does this thing like does this thing like fold away? What what happens? The only like part that? that folds is those blue bits. Is that like, it? Yeah. So the bit in the middle is where the ninja stars go and it activates their power. So it's like you get the morph suit, you get the weaponry and whatever, and you go, bah! But that is about, it's like this, it's like the size of my head pretty much. And it's this humongous thing. But then the other thing as well is like, they get a gold ranger eventually, which makes me laugh, who for whatever reason looks like a cowboy. The suit is a bit of an iffy one. His choice of weaponry is a cross between a guitar and a blaster. But the worst bit of all, I couldn't find an image of it, but his morpher looks like a burger. I kid you not, looks like a cheeseburger. <laughs> I think it was just, 
in bad translation from the Japanese series. They were trying to make it look like an American ranger. Oh, for God's sake. You could, why don't you just have a donut? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's just... Oh, good almighty. There's something about the Morphers as well. Something which is so obvious, yet yeah, this question didn't come to my mind until I was racking my brain last night. In every single, like, every single Power Rangers there's ever been, before they morph, for some reason, they always have to say the same thing every time they morph. Like, it's morphing time, shifting the turbo, mm -hmm. and so on. And they have to say something before they morph. Why? Does that make it any better? Do you have to say that before you morph to make it happen? Or can you just morph without saying anything? Well, I mean, the only series that ever relevant enough to actually explain it was RPM. It made me laugh. There was a character in it called Ziggy, who basically didn't want to be a Power Ranger, but ended up becoming one anyway. And he basically questions everything about being a Power Ranger within one day of being one. And it, <laughs> it makes me laugh because he basically says to the like person that created all of this, why is it every time I morph, there's explosions behind me? And she goes, what the hell are you on about? Like, every time, look at the footage. And they like, they pan to the footage and like, eh? and she goes, that's just discharge energy from when you morph. But can't you make it a bit smaller? And it's just like, if I made it smaller, you wouldn't be able to have your powers. And it's like, okay. And then he's on about like, then the Blue Ranger, which makes me laugh, he's Scottish. The only time I think they had a Ranger that was technically British, he was Scottish and it was unbelievably thick, the accent. I don't even know how the hell he was able to transform. Hello, what are you on? I'm a Power Ranger. But he, <laughs> yes, pretty much. But he basically moans at her that why do they have to say, like, um, why do they have to say, like, um, Power Rangers, RPM, get in gear? Like, why do we have to say that? Why can't we just say something else? She goes, So you want me to recode this entire system just because you don't like the phrase? It goes, Well, yeah, like, surely when you want to try and get to the point. And she I goes, yeah, but the thing... valid question, to be honest. This is it. But she just basically cuts him a new one and says, yeah, I could do it, but it would mean we would be down for power for about a month. And that, because there's another thing that's related to that. Whenever they use their weapons or whatever, whenever their Zord does something as well, for some reason, they can't just use their weapon as is. They have to say something before they use it. Like They have to, they have to state the name of it. Yeah, or they have to say, yeah... Or like when you have like the wolf, when you have the Lunar Wolf Ranger in Wild Force, where he's like Lunar Q, you know, and like has to say something, and I'm just like, can't you just freaking use it? You're wasting time. I know, I know, but I wonder if it's just for the kids or what? I don't know. But the thing I always wonder, right, is that obviously there's always this see that the clips where they transform. How long does that take? Is it does it happen in real time or does time pause and they transform and then they're ready to go again? Well, yeah, cause because how many, how many like seasons in Power Rangers have we seen where the whole time that they're morphing, well, by the time they're finished, the bad guys are gone? <laughs> well, it's not even that. Sometimes the bad guys are still where they are. Like the bad guys, there's like there's scenes where they haven't morphed yet. The bad guys are shooting away and they somehow miss them. They are like more terrible shots than the armed guard from. Star oh, Wars. Ter more terrible shots than the stormtroopers because they always seem to miss <laughs> and it always lands behind them, never yes. in front of them. <laughs> yes, but it's just like they start shooting and then they transform, and it's like somehow in the blip of what seems to be thirty seconds per Power Ranger, the the baddies haven't even landed one shot. But more to the point, they haven't even like changed position. Like, considering the fact that it's one bad guy that's leading them, and then it's, like, 20 to 30, like, mini bad guys, putty men or whatever, why don't they just go in a round circle, fire them in, like, a firing squad system, and then that'd be over? Well, in that whole time, you just see, like, one of the main baddies just texting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like... Don't get me wrong, Power Rangers is an amazing series, but I swear it's gotten worse over time just because I think the expectation from the actors just gets less and less by each generation. Well, plus even another thing which doesn't make sense. Obviously, even when they're in plain clothes, they're all colour-coded. Like red, blue, black, yellow, pink, whatever. They're all colour-coded. But the That's... thing is with that, 
I'm wondering, what happens if one of those Power Rangers, what, what happens with the Red Ranger, wants to wear a black shirt one day? Well, you that know? leads into one of my points, which I saw someone took the mick out of a few years back, is that the original Power Ranger team is Zordon racist. Because if you look, if you remember, Black Ranger is wearing black. Yellow Ranger is Asian. Pink oh. Ranger is... Yeah, you see. <laughs> oh no, I remember now. Because yeah, yellow, yellow ranger, Asian. Yeah, but yeah, black ranger, black. <laughs> but the red ranger was uh, Indian American. So again, it's yeah, like <laughs> uh, it's uh, just like because I remember we were going to do a video on that, like sort of like the dark side of Power Rangers, which hmm. is coming soon, folks. But yeah, yes. I I see your point how. You know, it's just kind of underlying things, which is there. It definitely is there. <laughs> definitely. But there's also another weird logic that I completely forgot about until I was doing research about Power Rangers is, do you remember Power Rangers Turbo? Yeah, of course I do, yeah. Do you remember the Blue Ranger? Yes. He was a 10-year-old kid but then somehow grew a foot every time he morphed into a Blue Ranger. How? The... <laughs> Dude, it be the same size. Well, I'm wondering whether the suit ages him up or whether it has inbuilt stilts. No, 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 I hate that. I hate it. Because you see his body go... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, like, there's other things as well where you've got Power Rangers in space where they basically... The one time they realise that maybe Earth isn't that safe anymore. We'll leave the planet because we don't want to be invaded by aliens anymore. So we'll go to are a new they, planet. Are they just called Power Rangers in space? Because you've got space, you've got galaxy, you've got Zeo as well. Yeah, so it goes Power Zio, Rangers Zeo. Yeah, well, it's Power Rangers Mighty Morphing. Then it was Power Rangers Zeo. Then it's Power Rangers Turbo. Power Rangers in space. Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. And then light speed rescue. Yeah. But <sighs> Time Force is probably the most iffy one of all. So within the first episode, you meet the Time Force team, which is some sort of weird government function to a degree. It wasn't a full on government thing, but it was trained enough to be like it ish. The Red Ranger dies. He basically gets completely obliterated by the main bad guy called Rancic, which, again, is an interesting name. They go back to what was classed as the modern day back then, which was 2001. 20 years ago, Time Force. Good God. Basically, they go back oh in God, time. I've just aged a little bit more. <laughs> mm, yeah. They go back in time to meet the descendant of, sorry, the ancestor of the Red Ranger to basically recruit him to be the new Red Ranger to try and basically stop Rancic to destroy the world before it's even happened. Which is the Quantum Ranger. Yeah, so then the yeah. original Red Ranger becomes the Quantum Ranger because apparently he's not died, he's just slightly wounded and then gets completely miffed off. Wait a minute, but if the Red Ranger died... <laughs> oh, this is a balling. Yeah, so the original Red Ranger... Well, supposedly... The original Red Ranger died. Yeah, so the team go back in time to 2001 to meet his ancestor to recruit him to be the new Red Ranger because it's all deemed into DNA. Right. So he picks up the mantle. The Pink Ranger was in, was engaged to the Red Ranger. And basically, she didn't trust him because she just butt her over the fact that her fiancé died. Over the series, she falls in love with his ancestor for whatever reason. And then it's then revealed that he never died, the original Red Ranger. He was just too wounded to carry on being the Red Ranger. So he becomes the Quantum Ranger which basically looks like the Red Ranger with added armour. And basically, he comes back to help them out. But be by the time he's revealed to be alive, she's sort of in turmoil of whether or not to go back to him or stay in the past. By the end of the series, she stays in the past and she gets engaged and married to the ancestor of the original Red Ranger. <laughs> yeah. 
But isn't that just a little bit creepy? Uh, just a bit. Like, it's just... I'm trying to remember what year... I think the year that Time Force originally came from was meant to be 2115. Round about then, yes. Yeah, but the thing... that. So when it came to, like, the Super Megaforce series, they did tap into the Quantum Rangers' Zord as a way to bolster their ability, right? But the Time Force, like, Zords all come from the future because they can't stay in the past. They always go back to the time they're from. Yeah. How the hell is modern-day technology able to tap into technology from the future? That's like a 3310 no, Nokia. No, that... No, that that doesn't make any sense. That's like a thirty-three Nokia trying to tap into my Mac. Like it won't work. Yeah, or just like you remember those brick, or like those brick phones from the from the nineteen eighties trying to tap into an iPhone like eleven. You know. Yeah. That thing... makes no sense. No, no. But the thing is, with a lot of the morphers, is originally they were. They were handheld devices to a degree that they just used randomly. But as soon as mobile phones came in, most of the rangers had their morphers that looked like mobile phones. Yes. So if we have a look at some of them at the moment, let's have a look. So the first one is Wild Force. Uh, I I had some of these. I had yeah. a few of these. <laughs> now, I love the fact that they call it a growler morpher. Growl because phone. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't think they could have merged the two and call it a growler. <laughs> <laughs> a growler. Bloody hell. Every, like, uh, is every, is a, what is this? It's your beaver. <laughs> <laughs> We're very well, no, immature here, these, folks. Kid, the cool thing about these is that they actually had sort of like hidden legs which folded down to look yes. like animals, which was actually yeah. quite a cool touch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, they definitely... I think those were the first morphers where they looked a bit more realistic in terms of trying to be disguised. Yes, yeah. Because with Mighty Morphin, it was the size of a belt buckle, but they never wore it as a belt buckle. I never understood that logic. But like... Mighty Morphin, like, their morphers just popped out of nowhere. Yeah, well, it's like they always had it behind their back, which I like never it, understood. Like their, yeah, like did it? Have, they have it clipped onto their belt at the back. Well, the thing is with the design of the Mighty Morphin one, I'm wondering whether or not it looks like a fanny pack or what we call here in the UK a bum bag. Yeah, because it kind of does. Like it's that goes on the belt. It's it's odd. Yeah, and then they like they do the whole. Yeah, but this is what the Mystic Force one was, which. It was so bizarre, this one, because I think it was their attempt to try... Because Harry Potter came out around that time as well. That's probably why they did Mystic Force. But it was just the fact that it was a... Originally, they were wands, but they transformed them into cell phones because logic. But the cell phones somehow looked like magic wands still. But why, <laughs> why don't you just have magic wands, then? I don't know. I don't know. But I f the thing is, as well, I didn't realise, so I looked back into it, is that Mystic Force is the very first team that was comprised of people that were either Australian or New Zealanders. There was nobody that was American. Yeah. Which, I don't know, it was a bit more interesting because they seemed a bit more happy in being a Power Ranger. Yeah, probably. <laughs> But then we get, this is RPM. So again, it's another cell phone one. But for whatever reason, they had cartridges. Like, the, the top bit, they slid the cartridge in to do whatever it is they needed to do. Which I could never understand. Because they still had to key in the code to unlock it. But what's the point in that? I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's so bizarre. And then... That is the Samurai one, which, again, is another cell phone one. But it took the element of Mystic Force, where they could, like, scribe the, like, symbols in the air to get what they needed. Yeah. But I, th there's nothing on it, like, to, like, have a phone, like, a like tip on it to, like, draw with anything. 
I don't know. It like look at when I first like saw them ages ago. I honestly, I honest to God, thought it was just somebody who like added on bits to an old like Razor Motorola. Yeah, I mean this the thing thing is, it's definitely a very bizarre series, nonetheless. Power Rangers, and as I said earlier, it's all based around making merchandise off kids. I mean, this is my Power Ranger Morpher that I have here. And, again, it doesn't work at the moment, no batteries, but, like, it's another cell phone one where it's just for pure logic to look like a phone at the same time. But why? Like... (laughs) But even like there's a few other things which has never made any sense to me. It's just obviously if they're I I don't even think it, even if you're a government if you're a government sector, I think if you're a government sector, like let's just say um Lightspeed Rescue, I think surely like the public would know about them, but how come like most of the time the public has no idea about the Power Rangers, despite them fighting in very public places and causing all this calamity? Why doesn't any why doesn't the public know about them? No, but then the other photographer or journalist must have spotted them or taken a picture or something, you know. Well, that's it. But then the thing I've always wondered, being a grown up, that because of obviously some teams were government functioned Power Rangers, how much bloody tax do they get taxed on to fund all this? Oh my god, can you imagine? (laughs) I would hate to think what in their Power Rangers universe the taxpayers were paying. I just like it's bizarre like everything about this is bizarre i think i don't think there is any actual logic behind any of this like the thing is there are so many things about the series that just don't add up over the years you just think why like what is it that they're trying to achieve because there's so many different bad guys along the way why haven't they just gone and stop the main bad guy from the get-go that's what i said but what else can we say about this series besides the fact that it is ultimately cheesy well something which i noticed from power rangers wild force which there's a floating island which all the animal zords live on and where they live on part of the time which is called the animaria it's like this magical floating island up in the sky but the problem with that is nobody knows about this magical island Despite in the sky, you've got bloody satellites, you've got planes, you've got helicopters. Somebody would have seen it, but yet no one knows. <laughs> no, but the thing is, with that plus, logic... The other thing, with the height that this thing is at, at that altitude, everybody would die of suffocation at that height. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with you on that one. But the other thing as well is... The logic behind the Animaria one is that it's been there from the dawn of time, tapping into the wildlife of the planet. So I'm just wondering, has it got its own, like, it's got its own atmosphere? I don't know. Or, like, its own climate? I'm not sure. Well, I'm just trying to figure out why didn't they help out sooner? Like, given the fact that they had probably six teams, give or take, before Wild Force came about, why didn't they help out sooner? (laughs) Yeah. But the other thing I found really bizarre about Wild Force is the obsession with football. Because with a lot of the Zords, they had like the transformation scenes where they used oh, the they Zords had, like, to... You had the, ro- you had the rhino, which turned into the legs. Then you had an armadillo, which turned into a football. Yes, which I could never get my head around. Like, what was the point of that? I, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, these animal spirit Zord things, no football. Yes. Apparently they've been watching a lot of David Beckham at the time. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Christ. But, yeah. Is there anything else you want to add today before we wrap up? Just one more thing, and that is going back to the uh, the Red Ranger episode from 2002, which was in Wild Force Squirrel, which is one of my favourite episodes. And if I can just ignore all the logic, I would very much enjoy it. And I did when I was younger. But the problem is... It doesn't explain on the move why the moon has the same gravity as Earth and how they can even breathe. Yeah. Um... yeah because like they can breathe with with and without their suits. How? I don't know. I mean, the thing is, going back to the moon, 
the very first of uh, Power Ranger team, they basically fight Rita Repulsa, who I still find is the most cringy villain of all of them. Oh, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll get you, my little pretties. Oh um, gosh, she, she reminds you of that like that horrible aunt that you never want to see. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, right, the whole series basically kick-started off because two stupid astronauts took the lid off something. That's literally it. I remember. <laughs> but the thing is, like, they never explain how it was sealed. It was just sealed away by Zordon. But they, it was two random astronauts that were able to lift it off. Like, how? <laughs> like I know there's no gravity on the moon but then I think I remember there's a bit where they like complain that they dropped it on their foot and it's like that wouldn't work because if there's no gravity it would float away well there is gravity on the moon it's just it's so much less like hence the reason if like if you on moon's gravity if you drop a bowling ball and a feather they will fall at the exact same rate yeah because but... of the, like the gravity on the moon <sighs> It's just, it's such a stupid series. Because the other, the one last thing I wanted to put into this is with the Mighty Morphing series and a few other series, is that the little henchmen, whether it be the putty men or the bog standard henchmen, whatever you want to call them, they seem to be comprised of the same stuff that the big bad guy for that episode is as well. Yeah. So, what, how does it make them any different? Because the putty men is made from the same putty that the sculptor makes for the bad guy per episode. Yeah, good point. But the bad guy per episode is somehow monumentally more dangerous than the putty men. Yeah. Logic. Logic. Power Rangers logic. Yes. But there we go. That's this week's episode wrapped up quite nicely. What's your topic for next week? Well, we're going to be carrying on with Power Rangers, but this one is going to be a little bit darker. So not for children's ears, which this channel is not. Uh, but we're going to be talking about, which something which we've wanted to talk about for a while, which is going to be the darker side of Power Rangers. So mm -hmm. it's going to go into a lot of controversial things, which are quite obvious, but they are there. And uh, talk about the dark side where, like, the act where the actors have gone on and prospered and where some have when some people on reddit have said about power rangers curse which we're going to get into next week yeah so there we go subscribe to theory craft and don't forget to like the video and turn on notifications for future videos so again it's been two dudes and two furry little guys at rant raven ramble and again stay home stay safe and we'll see you all soon Oh, <laughs>